Uh, yeah, so please take it away. Alright. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you all about this uh, fairly impromptu thing that I tried recently. Uh, it's, it's this idea that I've been floating, floating with for the longest time. Uh, sorry, uh, let me just get this out. Uh. Uh, okay, so uh, I had this Instax that I bought on Carousel for $8. It was broken. Uh, but then uh, I was thinking, what if I put a another lens on it with a shutter on it and use it as a medium format camera. So uh, I thought it would be an interesting experiment and I went, I went to buy the Instax. So right now this is what it looks like. Uh, it looks like a normal Instax from the back but when you flip it around you have this very fancy uh, thing here. It's a manual shutter with a 75mm lens on it and it works like a, what do you feel like a traditional film camera, a medium format camera. So what you do is, uh, uh, I'll show you how it works first. Uh. Uh, first you meter the scene. You use like an iPhone or something more modern to understand how much light there is in the scene. So I'm using a Lux, it's, it's a meter app. So I would point it at the scene that I want to take. Like let, let's say I'm shooting here right now, right? Uh, it will say that if I want to shoot this scene here, uh, I will need a... Uh, okay. I'm constrained by the hardware here. So let's say if I want to shoot with this camera, right, uh, I have uh, a shutter speed of either 25, 75, or 200 for a second. And seeing that it's, it's a bit dark here, right, I will need to use like um, probably 25. So over here, I'll set it to shutter priority first. Um, just a moment now. Um, okay, it's very hard to show you all here. So I'm just going to take a photo and just hope it looks all right. So I set it as um, a 1 over 25. And um, there's an aperture ring somewhere uh, here. Okay, uh, there's an aperture ring here as well. So I'm just going to set it to um, like um, 3.5 and hope that everything is in focus, although I don't think it will work out very well. And there's a focusing ring here. This is a 3D printed ring here. So I'm just going to move it out a little bit. I just got this feeling that it's only going to be Chin Mei that's in focus, uh, but I'm just going to try again. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's <laughs> find out. I, I really don't know how it works. I've never really used it in a dark room, so this is my first time, like, just, just to show how it works. So, uh, like an old camera, you have to first cock the shutter. You move this down. And then you can still use this to take a look. Like, I'm not sure. It's good. Yeah, that's chimney there. Okay. So when you're ready, right, you move this. And this is a photo that's taken. Like, so this is how it works now. So uh, if, you want, if you want to eject the film like how you normally do, right, uh, you hold down the shutter. And uh, after some time, a while, a little, this is a small one, this, this pops out. And then uh, you let it rest for a while and hopefully you have like a photo of Jin Mei here. Yeah, so this is, this is the end product. La. And then I'll go through about uh, how I came about doing this. So uh, I bought this on Carousel for $8. $8 is a steal, la. I mean, like, even though it's broken. Uh, turned out that it was a um, corroded battery contact and then I cleaned it out, right? And then I had like a $60 in stacks here. Yeah. I mean, if I had better financial, financial sense, I would have sold it away and then bought uh, something else. La. But then I thought, I yeah, might as well. La. Um, so uh, I went down to this uh, place at, uh, I think um, it's near the, um, the court. I'm not so sure what it is. You know, the Supreme Court. There's this, there's this like, it's like camera haven. They sell a lot of camera stuff there. So I passed by a store there. Yeah, Peninsula, yes, okay. So I saw this camera there for $65. Ooh, okay. I can't zoom in, but it's $65. <coughs> and I thought, okay, uh, what, what's really interesting about that camera, right, is that it's, uh, it's a medium format camera. It shoots 120 film. And 120 film, right, is just about right to cover the... It, it, casts, the, it casts a light, uh, the, uh, the image, right, that can just nice cover this size. So I thought it'd be interesting to buy that remove the lens and then put it on an Instax. So that's what I did. And um, the hard part, right, was getting the Instax to cooperate because it wasn't meant to work without firing a shutter every time you took a photo. So how it usually works is um, you twist the Instax, the lens pops out, and then the camera turns on like there's a, there's a, like a limit switch inside that turns it on. Uh, but the thing is, when you gut out the insides, right, uh, the electronics don't really work anymore. And the second thing is when you're using Instax, right, the flash always fires. So you have a very traditional Instax view, like everything is blown out, like uh, the face is a bit blown out, and everything else is black in the background. So um, I didn't want that. I wanted this to be more like an original like, uh, camera that you used in the past. So uh, I thought the easiest way out was to just drive the motors directly. So I removed all the electronics, all the flash electronics, uh, all the limit switches. So what's left in here right, is my batteries. I have my batteries in here. And then uh, my battery is directly connected to the shutter button. And from the shutter button, it's connected straight to the motor. So it's completely manual. When I hold the shutter button down, it starts pushing the film out. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, this worked out pretty well because uh, I didn't have to add in a microcontroller or anything. It just works as it is. You listen for a click and you hope that it's done and you don't touch it again. Or else the next one will start coming out. Uh. Yeah. So um, it shoots pretty decent photos. Um, this, is, uh, this was my first few shots. Uh, this was my desk. Uh, it's got a very nice uh, depth of view to it. Oh yeah, anyway, the photos developed is completely underexposed. Uh, you can't really see much. But yeah, it's in a very dark place, so I guess it's kind of expected. Um, this was one of the first few shots I had. Uh, I really liked the depth of view, like, um, like how the whole soldering irons in the focus and everything else behind it was soft. And um, this was outdoors. You have a bit of a problem with this because when you are working with film cameras, right, uh, your ISO is decided by your film itself. And in stacks, you don't get to choose. Uh, you, you're stuck with 800, so it's one, two, three. I think it's three stops above your normal like 100 film. So it's quite hard to work with. You can't really shoot in daylight. And I like to shoot with my camera wide open most of the time. Yeah, I'm a sucker for like, a very nice bokeh. So uh, I like to shoot wide open. And you can't do that in the daytime. So it's more like a twilight camera or a morning camera, depending on what time you wake up. Yeah. So um, more fancy photos. Uh, this, you can try things like double exposure. So what, what happens if I took a photo here? And then I look somewhere else, I took another photo. You get something like this. So this is like my dog. And um, uh, the background is a bougainvillea. So if you have something that's completely blown out on the background and very, uh, completely underexposed in the foreground, right? You can take two shots and you get a mask and you get something like this. It's, it's not perfect, but it turned out pretty well. I liked it. Yeah, you can also try... Um, uh, this, is, this is quite conventional. Uh, this is a landscape photo. I went to the causeway and I was like, this is interesting because it was quite dim. It was very cloudy that day. And I thought if I stopped it down all the way and I sh shot it at maximum shutter speed, I could get a decent uh, landscape photo. And it turned out pretty okay. It's a bit bright here. Like, it, uh, the projector blows out a, a bit of the, um, the front. Uh. So uh, it turned out pretty okay. So uh, anything to note? Let's see. Um, how I attached this? Okay, I, I printed an adapter. And then I decided, instead of using screws, I'll just use like, tape to tie it together. So you have this copper tape here. Uh, it worked out pretty well. This was uh, quite lucky because uh, when you're using it in stacks, I believe it, they have, uh, I think, 60 millimeter focal length. But this is 75, so it's very, very close. And uh, this, this very, very close, uh, closely matching focal length means that I can use the existing chamber. I don't have to rip it out and it can shut. Like, you know, it fits in my bag very nicely. So, uh, another thing to take note also is that uh, if the focal lengths, uh, if they are too mismatched, you're going to have a bit of a vignetting issue because uh, if it's too telly, if it zooms in too far, right, it's, it's going to, uh, it's going to need some, it's going to, it's, you're going to, you'll need to shift it out further. And in doing this, right, uh, the, the chamber inside will start um, occluding the image that's coming out. So you're going to have this crop out there. And if it's, I don't think there's a consequence to having it too shallow. Uh, it's just that you won't get an effect that you're looking for. Yeah, so um, some interesting tips, like if you want to try to do this, if you happen to be on Carousel and then if you see like uh, in stacks for cheap, right, you can try it. Um, if, if you are using a, a manual shutter like this, right, uh, one problem we have is these cameras are old, you don't know how well they work, and uh, the shutter speed is a problem because uh, that really determines the outcome of your photo. So uh, with our modern phones, right, you can use your slow motion, uh, slow motion camera, you can uh, hold it up to a light source, record it, <coughs> uh, activate the shutter, and then when you're on your desktop, right, you can go through the frames one by one. And then if you count the open frames, right, you can confirm or correct the shutter speed. So let's say um, I have an example here. Uh, or not. Okay, I don't have an example here. So uh, if you, the, let's say I use an iPhone and uh, I'm shooting at 240 frames per second, right? Uh, you, can, you can record it and count the number of open frames. So uh, let's say if I have like five open frames, right, uh, you can have, oh shoot, I don't, okay, this is on a Mac, I can't really run the, run the calculator, but I, I don't know how to use the calculator here, but I can do the math, count the number of open frames. You want to calculate? Uh, I think I'll pass it, okay, don't worry, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that with a known uh, frame rate, right, with a known frame rate, you can calculate the uh, effective shutter time, and then you can calibrate, like, let's say if you know that it's a bit too fast, or if it's a bit too slow, right, you can adjust it when you're, when you're doing the metering, like when I did just now, when I start, uh, when you're using this camera, the first thing you have to do right, is to meter the scene. You have to use a light meter. I can't afford a light meter, so I use my phone. La, but the process is usually the same. So um, this is important. Calibrate your camera before you use it. So yeah, I think uh, it's quite an experiment. Uh, it turned out pretty well. I'm trying it with a larger Instax now. And uh, unfortunately, it's not holding up that well because um, on a smaller camera, it's more forgiving. Uh, the vignetting is more shallow. But on a large camera, you have a bit of a problem. Like, you can actually see uh, uh, this black ring uh, occluding the sides uh, because of the baffles in, in here. I think, I'm not so sure myself because I'm not 
really sure about how um, optics works in cameras, but it, it's a hack that turned out pretty well, so I thought I'll share with you guys today. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Do uh. you all have any questions for me? Um, yeah. Can you, like the shutter, can you manually keep it open to do like a long exposure? Yes, you can. So uh, you can actually uh, achieve like a light trails with this. Uh, on this dial here, uh, you can shift this little indicator to B on bulb, yeah. and then uh, you you clock the shutter. You take a deep breath and you do this. And you just lift up the shutter for as long as you like to. And when you release really it, you have a long exposure shot, so you can have like cars going by and things like that. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can actually. Have you ever tried using an ND filter for your bike? Uh, yes, uh, I tried using an ND filter, but it did seem to work very well. Like, um, okay, I think I made a mistake. I bought a variable ND filter, and uh, I, I think I'll just say like, if um, variable ND filters seem to have this problem that you can't really get a very accurate uh, stop on it, like because they can they can vary to a very steep, uh, a very large. I don't know how you say that um, attenuation. So uh, the one that I had, right? I, I couldn't get it to uh, compensate back to like uh, ISO 100. So I would, if I had to do this again, I would buy an ND filter that is like um, three stops only. Don't get a variable one. But I think, I think if done proper, properly, like what do you say, right? ND filter will work out very well for this. Yeah. I have a question. How yes. do you get that shot of the uh, dog with the flowers? Okay. Um, how, you, how you do this, right, is... Um, what I did was I went to the flowers. Uh, I went to like a, a bunch of uh, bougainvilleas that were flowering, and then uh, I did the same thing. I muted the scene in my phone, and then uh, when the, I set the settings that I need to, I take the photo once, and then uh, afterwards, right, uh, I went to my dog. I told my dog to sit down and stay still for a long time, long time, and then uh, I I squat down so that the sky was uh, the sky was in the background. And the dog was in the shadow, like you know, at the door frame. So uh, why why I did this was that the sky would completely blow out the the rest, and uh, the dog would cast a silhouette, a shadow, which will only expose the uh, bougainvillea that's in the previous shot. And afterwards, I I eject the film as I normally did. Uh, yeah. Cool. Hmm. yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah. So I have a question. All right, well, then thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.